as nurses, we are on our feet a lot, um, you know, 12 hour shifts. And then by the time you get home, it can be 14, 16 hours. Sometimes you're on your feet. So, so what keeps you going through a 12 hour shift? Caffeine. <laughs> wanted to help people. I'm someone who's not a, doesn't like to sit so I'm always at the bedside and if I have free time I'm always talking to the patient finding out about them and what's important to them and you know just making them feel like they matter and you know that kind of helps get you through the day listening to the patient stories. It's a, sometimes a thankless job. People don't acknowledge, you know, there are many times that you don't eat lunch, you don't go to the bathroom, you don't get to do those things because they're so concerned about their patients and making sure you get your pain medicine on time and that you're not, you know, you get that Coke because you, you can't get it for yourself. And you know, I learn something new every day. I've been a nurse for 19 years. And at St. Elizabeth, you know, 19 years seems like a long time to be at an organization, but I'm probably one of the uh, lower tenured nurses because they stay at St. Elizabeth. Um, St. Elizabeth really supports their employees and we uh, we feel loyal to the organization because of that. Words of wisdom, it is scary but you will get through it. You will always have questions. Don't be afraid to ask them. I still ask questions. Teresa who's upstairs has been a nurse for about 30 years, she still asks questions. It's normal. You're never going to feel ready to come out of orientation. I don't think patients understand how much nurses care about doing a really, really, really good job. We don't want our patients to not have, you know, their needs met. And when we don't do those things or aren't able to do those things in a timely manner, we go home at the end of the day carrying that with us. I've never had a patient that I couldn't get along with. I always looked at the situation and then changed my demeanor and my approach to fit the patient's needs. And always, they came first for me. My patients always came first. When I teach students today, I teach them to go in and touch that person when they're greeting them. Even if it's just a light tap on the shoulder, just a finger on the shoulder. Immediately, you're giving them the message that you want to be there and that you care about them. You can't do that standing at the doorway looking into the room.